Okay, welcome everybody for uh, this Sutta class, and today we're going to be looking at Majjhima Nikaya number 151, the Pintapata Parisuddhi here. Sutta, which is about the uh, qualities that a bhikkhu, or presumably also a bhikkhuni, should have, um, and also uh, to purify the arms and the mental purity that they have while collecting arms on the arms run. And this particular sutta has one parallel in the Sangyukta Agama. Sangyukta Agama 236, uh, like all of the suttas in this chapter, uh, only has a Sangyukta Agama parallel, no Madhima Agama parallels. Uh, and this also has a partial parallel in the Akotara Agama. In, the, in this case, the Akotara Agama parallel has a similar introduction to the current sutta, but the body of the uh, uh, teaching in the sutta is uh, completely different. So uh, let's have a look through the text. Thus have I heard on one occasion the Blessed One was living at Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. Then when it was evening, Venerable Sariputta rose from meditation and went to the Blessed One. After paying homage to him, he sat down at one side. The Blessed One then said to him, Sariputta, your faculties are clear. The color of your skin is pure and bright. What abiding do you often abide in now, Sariputta? Now, Bhande, I often abide in voidness. Good, good, Sariputta, indeed you of, now indeed you often abide in the abiding of a great man, for this is the abiding of a great man, namely voidness. The word voidness, of course, sunyata, more, more commonly translated as emptiness. Uh, so sunyata viharena. Right, now abide in... The uh, attainment of emptiness. Now, what this actually means uh, is uh, a little bit uh, mysterious. Uh, clearly, uh, we're talking about a profound meditation attainment. Uh, when it's talking about what abiding do you often abide in now, it's, the word is vihara, and that word vihara in this kind of sense um, uh, usually means like a, a, what kind of meditation state has he been in. Now, uh, of course, one would expect that uh, a great disciple like Venerable Sariputta, whatever kind of meditation that he was sitting in, would have been fairly cool. But we don't know exactly how cool it is. Is it jhanas? Is it formless jhanas? Is it something kind of vipassana-ish or something? We're not quite sure. So the Buddha asks, what is it? And he says, I invite in emptiness. Now this is actually quite a, a, a subtle and, and somewhat difficult topic in the suttas, uh, but uh, it seems that there's a uh, uh, there's a there's a way in which an, an arahant can um, practice a, a, a particular meditation state, which according to the commentaries they call the arahata pala samapati, the attainment of the fruition of arahantship, and in that meditation attainment, uh, which is actually like a specific meditation state then the arahants will uh, uh, can enter that. And uh, it's, it's, it's like, uh, the way I understand that attainment of arahantship is that um, just as when you, w w the, the attainment of, of jhana is, is, is an absorption of concentration of mind, which is based on the abandoning of the five hindrances. And so to this fruition attainment of arahantship is an absorption of mind, which is based on the abandoning of greed, hatred, and delusion. And just as the abandoning of greed, hatred, and delusion is a far more profound thing than the mere abandoning of the five hindrances, so too this particular attainment is far more profound than mere jhana, if I dare to use that term. Uh, and so you find uh, statements where the gods and so on come and they say, we don't know what kind of meditation that you're doing. We can't, we, 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 there's like this kind of mysterious quality to it, as indeed you find in this particular sutta where even the Buddha is asking him about it. Of course, it doesn't mean the Buddha didn't know, but clearly it was thought it was something that was worth asking about and bringing up in conversation. So I don't want to go into too much into the, to the details of this. Uh, the, the, the classic modern study of this, of course, was Venerable uh, Nyanananda's um, uh, the concept and reality. Uh, so he goes into quite a lot of detail into these things. Uh, and also another one which was quite good on the topic was um, Peter Harvey's book, 
uh, which I can't remember the title of it now, something about consciousness. Um, and Bigger Body refers to another couple of notes here. I'm just seeing if there's anything. No. Um, so the 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 the, uh, the doctrinal issue at question here is that um, this particular state of arahantship, of course, is in a sense it, it it is a meditation. It is it is a state of consciousness, no matter how uh, profound it is. It's a state of consciousness, and so it 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 feeds into or relates to this whole kind of question about whether nibbana can itself be considered to be a state of transcendental or, or metaphysical consciousness. Uh, and of course the general tenor of the suttas is that Nibbāna is the cessation of consciousness. But there are of course many teachers and scholars and so on who would like to argue that, that vijnana is in fact a kind of transcendental consciousness. And these kinds of passages uh, are, are some of the kinds of passages which uh, tend to sort of uh, support that idea or are used to support that idea uh, in any case but in any case I mean it's fairly obvious that this particular passage is talking about a specific meditation attainment which Sariputta is sitting in and it's not talking about uh, what happens for example to an arahant after they pass away um, so this is how I take it is that uh, Venerable Sariputta is abiding in this uh, special uh, abiding uh, and that's the, the Mahapurisa, of course, being a term for an arahant, a great man. Okay, going on. So, sorry, Putra, if a bhikkhu should wish, may I now often abide in voidness? He should consider thus. So notice that using that phrasing, uh, if a bhikkhu should wish, is harking back to some of the earlier suttas in the Majjhima Nikaya. It's almost as if it's, it's um, sort of rounding off the Majjhima Nikaya a bit. Uh, the Akankeya Sutta, if a bhikkhu could wish, gives a very similar kind of structure. That's Majjhima uh, 6. If a bhikkhu should wish, may I now often abide in voidness. He should consider thus. On the path by which I went to the village for alms, or in the place where I wandered for alms, or on the path by which I returned from the alms round, was there any desire, lust, hate, delusion, or aversion in my mind regarding forms cognizable by the eye? If, by so reviewing, he knows thus, on the path by which I went to the village for arms, or in the place where I wandered for arms, or on the path by which I returned from the arms round, there was desire, lust, hate, delusion, or aversion in my mind regarding forms cognizable by the eye, then he should make an effort to abandon those evil, unwholesome dhammas. But if by reviewing he knows thus, on that path, or the place I wandered for arms, on the path I returned, there was no desire, lust, hate, delusion, or aversion in my mind regarding forms cognizable by the eye, then he can abide happy and glad, training day and night in wholesome states. Uh, and again, sorry, put a bhikkhu should consider thus on the path by which I went to the village for arms, or in the place where I wandered for arms, or on the path by which I returned from the arms round, was there any desire, lust, hate, delusion, or aversion in my mind regarding sounds cognizable by the ear, or odors cognizable by the nose, flavors cognizable by the tongue? or tangibles cognizable by the body, or dumb mind objects cognizable by the mind. If by reviewing he knows that there was, then he should make an effort to abandon those evil unwholesome dhammas. But if on reviewing he knows that there wasn't, then he can abide uh, uh, happy and glad, training day and night in wholesome dhammas. So this, of course, is the uh, practice of sense restraint. Uh, and uh, the, the special opportunity for that practice is, of course, going into village for uh, alms. Again, Sariputta, a bhikkhu should consider thus, are the five cords of sensual pleasure abandoned in me? If by reviewing he knows thus, the five cords of sensual pleasure are not abandoned in me, then he should make an effort to abandon those five cords of sensual pleasure. But if by reviewing he knows thus, the five cords of sensual pleasure are abandoned in me, then he can abide happy and glad, training day and night in wholesome states. And uh, I think we've remarked on this before, but the translation, the five cords of sensual pleasure is really... A bit of a mistranslation. Uh, it's based on the Pali Pancha Kama Guna, and the word Guna is glossed in the Pali commentary as meaning like a cord or a tie, which is a fair enough as a as a sort of uh, kind of uh, etymological kind of punning explanation of the word, but 
Gruner doesn't normally mean that, and it's never given that explanation in the northern schools. It purely seems to be a Pali explanation, as far as I'm aware. So uh, probably better just to say the five kinds of sensual pleasure. You know, I'll give it a more neutral uh, rendering. Again, Sariputta, a bhikkhu should consider thus. Are the five hindrances abandoning me? If by reviewing he knows thus, uh, the five hindrances are not abandoned in me, he, then he should make an effort to abandon the five hindrances. But if by reviewing he knows thus, the five hindrances are abandoned in me, then he can abide happy and glad, training day and night in a wholesome state. Again, Sariputra Bhikkhu should consider thus, are the five aggregates affected by clinging fully understood by me? If by reviewing he knows thus, the five aggregates affected by clinging or better grasping are not fully understood by me, then then he should make an effort to fully understand those five aggregates affected by grasping. But if by reviewing he knows thus the five aggregates affected by grasping are fully understood by me, then he can abide happy and glad, training day and night in wholesome dhammas. Again, Sariputta Abhikhu should consider thus, are the four foundations of mindfulness developed in me? If by reviewing he knows that they're not developed, then he should make an effort to develop the four foundations of mindfulness. But if on reviewing he knows thus the four foundations of mindfulness are developed in me, then he can abide happy and glad, training day and night in wholesome dhammas. Again, so he put a bhikkhu should consider thus, are the four kinds of right striving, the four bases of spiritual power, the five faculties, the five powers, the seven enlightenment factors, and the noble eightfold path developed in me. Of course, these being all together taken are the 37 bodhipakya dhammas. Also, our serenity and insight, uh, samatha and vipassana, are developed in me. If he, by reviewing he knows thus samatha and vipassana are not developed in me, then he should make an effort to develop them. But if by reviewing he knows that they are developed, then he could abide happy and glad, training day and night in wholesome dhammas. Then Sariputta so Abhikhu should consider thus, are true knowledge and deliverance realized by me? If by reviewing he knows that true knowledge and deliverance are not realized, then he should make an effort to realize them. But if by reviewing he knows that they're realized, then he can abide happy and glad, training day and night in wholesome dhammas. Sariputta, so whatever recluses and brahmins in the past have purified their alms food, have all done so by repeatedly reviewing thus. Whatever recluses and brahmins in the future will purify their alms food, will all do so by repeatedly reviewing thus. Whatever recluses and brahmins in the present are purifying their alms food, are all doing so by repeatedly reviewing thus. Therefore, Sariputta, you should train thus. We will purify our alms food by repeatedly reviewing thus. This is what the Blessed One said. The Venerable Sariputta was satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. Uh, yep. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, quite likely that there were others present, yeah. Maybe just kind of took Sariputta as, as a starting point and then was addressing everybody else. You know, if you want to be like Sariputta and abide in emptiness and have fun and right. happiness, then, then you better do this and you can do that. Yeah. I mean, that he's actually saying to Sariputta. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, it it does it does raise an interesting question though. I mean, we shouldn't, as always with these things, we shouldn't pass over the the, the question because the, the, there is a, a somewhat curious disjunction between the first part of the sutta, which is a conversation between the Buddha and Sariputta about the abiding in emptiness, and then the rest of it, which is all about how you should practice for going for alms. But even the practice going for alms then also seems to be a little bit. Uh, kind of extended. The first part of it is is pretty straightforward. They practice sense restraint while you're on arms, very sensible. But then the, later on, it goes into very general dhamma teachings, which don't seem to be specifically connected with going for arms, like about you know understanding the five aggregates or something like that. So it's interesting to notice those 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 details in the structure. Of course, it could well be the case. Uh, you know, the Buddha is taking up this particular uh, instance. Quite likely, there was a group of uh, bhikkhus around. We're talking, you know, the Buddha's, uh, uh, you know, sitting there in the evening in Rajagaha in the bamboo grove. So it's a large monastery. There's quite likely a lot of people around. Uh, the Chinese version set in Savatthi, of course, but. And at the end, it says the bhikkhus divided into the, the bhikkhus. Right. So, so we assume that there are other bhikkhus there. But let's just have a quick look at the. Uh, 
parallel uh, and see whether we can glean anything from that. Until the end, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, one um, uh, the, the the basic introduction is uh, somewhat uh, similar, uh, but there is a there is an important difference. Is that um, uh, according to the Chinese version, it actually says that Sariputta had gone for arms before retiring to seclusion to meditate. Okay, so there's a connection there about going for arms round, which is sort of ties the sutta together a bit more. Another distance, difference is that according to the Pali version, the Buddha inquired after the purity of Sariputta's faculties, while according to the, the Sarvastivadin version, the Buddha asked Sariputta where he had come from. And on being told that Sariputta had come from his daily abiding in meditation in the forest, the Buddha asked Sariputta what meditation he had been practicing. In both cases, um, the uh, Ekotara Agama version uh, the partial parallel in the Ekotra Agama agrees with the Pali version. So we have one tradition, uh, curiously enough, in the Pali and the Ekotra Agama, and another tradition in the Sanyukta Agama. Um, okay, uh, but moving along, according to both versions, the Buddha explained that in order to uh, uh, re relate dwelling in emptiness, to, you know, so this is from Analia's uh, 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 comparative study. So a monk should uh, examine, if they want to be able to dwell in emptiness, then a monk should examine if anything he'd seen while going for alms or returning had caused the arising of desire in him. Uh, and they have a slightly different list of uh, defilements here. The Pali, as we've heard, has uh, desire, lust, anger, delusion and irritation, whereas the Sangyukta Agama has desire, affection, thoughts of craving and attachment. So it seems like all of the ones in the, in the Sarvastivadin version are about de desire, whereas the Pali has greed, hatred and delusion all in there, which seems to be probably a bit better because it's certainly not the case that when you go for arms that everything is attractive and nice all the time and that's the only problem about going for arms. You very frequently meet things that are uh, uh, annoying and uh, so on and you also very frequently meet things that are delusory and confusing. In fact, in fact, depending on where you go for arms, if you go to a uh, shopping centre for arms, they're, they're, they're specifically designed to be delusory and to, to, to shine bright lights at you from all directions so that you lose your sense of who you are and so on. So it uh, seems to be a bit more appropriate in the Pali version there. Um, uh, the Majjhima Agama version continues by applying the same treatment to the other senses, whereas the Sangyutta Agama version only takes up the case of visual forms um, rather than going through the six senses. And now, this is, this is an interesting little difference. I haven't looked at the, the details of this in the Sangyutta, but I would suspect what the reason for, this, reason for that difference is that, uh, that this, this sutta that we have in the Pali is in the Majjhima Nikaya. In the, in the Chinese, it's in the Sangyutta Agama. So as a sutra in the Sangyukta Agama, it's one of how many, perhaps a hundred or perhaps two hundred suttas, all dealing with the six senses. Okay, So when you have a hundred suttas in a row, all talking about the six senses, before too long, the copyists get a bit bored and they don't write down all of the six senses all the time and they abbreviate stuff. And so that it becomes, uh, as often they would mark the abbreviations, but at a certain point they'll even give up marking that there is an abbreviation and they just it just uh, uh, is taken for granted. So I think that's more likely that this is just uh, an artefact of the redaction rather than being uh, having any, any doctrinal significance. Um, okay, according to both versions, if on examination the monk finds out that unwholesome dhammas have arisen in his mind, he should make a firm effort to overcome them. The Sangyukta Agama version, that's the Sarvastivadin version in Chinese, uh, illustrates this effort with the image of a man whose head is on fire, a situation where this man would make an utmost effort to extinguish that fire. If a monk finds that his mind remained un unaffected by unwholesome dhammas, then he may dwell happily and continue to train himself day and night 
with energy and mindfulness. Of course, the simile of the man uh, with the head on fire, needing to practice to put the uh, thing out, uh, is uh, very commonly found in the Pali uh, Nikayas as well, uh, especially in the Anguttara Nikaya, and Venerable Anali in his study gives a list of references. Uh, Sangyukta Agama discourse uh, continues by indicating that to dwell happily in this way, free from defilements, and to train in wholesomeness while walking, standing, sitting, and lying down is the way to develop purity in regard to begging for food. Okay, so this is somewhat different from the Pali. Uh, so the Pali doesn't have the mention of the four postures. After having in this way clarified in which way a monk can become a pure recipient of alms food in the sense of becoming a worthy recipient, the Sangyukta Agama discourse concludes with the delighted reaction of Sariputta after having heard this exposition from the Buddha. So the Sangyukta Agama version, as befits a Sangyukta style text, is uh, shorter and sticks more closely to the topic of the six senses. Um, The uh, 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 okay. The the uh, Pali version, of course, continues by uh, bringing up a whole range of other topics, which we've already been through: the five types of sensual pleasure, the five hindrances, the five aggregates, the four satipatthanas, four eight efforts, four bases of psychic power, four five faculties, five powers, seven factors of awakening, eight four noble paths, samatha, and vipassana, and knowledge and liberation. None of which are found in the Chinese parallel. The Madhyama Nikaya version continues by explaining that summoners and Brahmins of the past, present and future times have, do and will develop purity in regard to receiving alms food by undertaking all of these practices. So that passage also absent in the uh, Sangyuta Agama version. Uh, since this entire presentation is absent from the Chinese version and since it does not seem to be indispensable from the viewpoint of the basic theme of the discourse, uh, Uh, one might wonder how far the presentation in the Madhyama Nikaya version could be the outcome of a later expansion of an originally shorter exposition, similar to the cases of the Maha Rahulovada Sutta and the Maha Sakaludayi Sutta. So uh, Analyo's phrases himself very cautiously there, but it seems, uh, on the contrary, to be pretty obvious that uh, that the Pali version has been significantly expanded and that that expansion took place uh, as it was shifted into the Madhyama Nikaya. Uh, the other interesting thing about those uh, details, of course, is that uh, we mentioned before that the uh, about the sort of the somewhat change in the topic. Uh, so, from the Ekotara Agama, which is the partial parallel, okay. So this, this one here, partial parallel. Um, after beginning in the same way as the uh, uh, Pali version. This one reports that Sariputta rose from seclusion, visited the Buddha, who asked about Sariputta's pure faculties. Uh, then Sariputta informed the Buddha about his practice of emptiness meditation, and then the and, uh, and and says that the Buddha also practiced such meditation. From this point onwards, or pray, sorry, the Buddha praised such meditation. From this point onwards, this version continues differently, as according to its report, the Buddha followed up the topic of the superiority of emptiness meditation by describing his own experiences before awakening. And thus, the remainder of this para of this sutta is no longer a parallel to the current sutta. So, uh, there actually seems to be really three sections to this particular sutta. One is that introductory section, which is parallel in all three of these versions. Uh, then there is the section on the purification of arms round by practicing sense restraint, which is common to the Pali and Chinese versions. Uh, and then there's the long section on all of the other uh, aspects of practice to be developed which is found only in the Pali uh, version. Uh, and uh, uh, seems to me that, that in some ways that all three of those sort of textual entities uh, are somewhat independent. The, the extra stuff in the Pali probably, or I, would, I would say almost certainly added when the Pali Majjhima Nikaya was formed. The, um, uh, the difference between the first two, connection between the first two is a little less obvious. But um, of course, it's more than possible that 
you know, in 45 years of knowing Sariputta, he remarked about his meditation on more than one occasion. So there's not uh, no particular need that it should be, should, you know, that that shouldn't happen more than once, especially as it is obviously used as a teaching device. But still, uh, the fact that the meditation part doesn't connect very closely to the arms round purification part uh, kind of suggests that uh, maybe these also were patched together at a later date. Uh, anyway, that's uh, possible. So uh, this is the Pindabhata Parisuddhi Sutta, and uh, despite the, uh, in this case, quite significant differences in terms of the text, uh, the basic uh, meaning and intent of the suttas uh, is all the same, and that is that if you want to get into deep states of samadhi and realization, that you have to start out with the basics and with the very simple things like being like sense restraint. And uh, in that respect, all of the texts are the same, and all of them uh, are right there in the core of some of what I think is the most beautiful aspects of the Dhamma and the Buddha's teachings, is that, that, that such profound things, like being able to abide in emptiness, uh, completely free of suffering and free of defilements, the fact that that kind of meditation attainment is, is grounded in such simple, ordinary, everyday things as walking through the village, how do you walk through the village? Uh, and I find that to be a very beautiful and very inspiring aspect of the Buddhist teachings. So any uh, questions on that sutta? No, they, they, that's not while you're doing that. They, that, that. This is a practice of, of, of checking your mind and reviewing your mind, which is going to lead to the abiding and emptiness. If you want to get enlightened and be able to get into these attainments, this is a practice that you have to do to be able to, to lead towards that. Yeah. So should we, if we should wish, may I now often abide in emptiness? Yeah. So it's kind of indicating that once these deluded states have disappeared, emptiness is the resulting backdrop whatever? Uh, I don't resulting backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> resulting state? <laughs> ba basically, state? yes, basically, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's right, it, it, this, this is the cause and the, the, the meditation emptiness is the effect. And even though I said before that the connection between these is somewhat tenuous, but what is actually very characteristic of the Buddha's teachings and that you see a number of times in the suttas is where, uh, where you start out with something which is a very high dhamma like this. And everyone goes, wow, this is really kind of amazing. And when, it comes to the, and when the Buddha talks about it, he actually talks about it by grounding it in very, very simple things and taking it back to what is it you're actually going to practice. An example of that, for example, would be the uh, Mahago Singha Sutta, where a group of different monks are sitting around discussing what kind of monk would illuminate the Gosinga wood uh, monastery. And then Moggallana says, oh, it would be a monk who had uh, great psychic powers. And Nanaruda said it would be a monk who had the divine eye and so on and so forth. So they all talk about these monks who are doing these amazing practices. And they're all talking about the results of those practices. You know, they're all talking about the final state of attainment. And they go to the Buddha and they ask him what kind of bhikkhu would illuminate the Mahagosinga uh, would. And the Buddha said, oh, if any monk should sit down and meditate and think, I'm not going to get up from my meditation seat before I attain enlightenment then that's, that's who would illuminate the, the, the Gosinga wood. So to see that, that difference that the Buddha points to the cause, uh, whereas they were all talking about the, the result. Mm. Does it mean that you need one and then confirm that to carry one out the Dharma is the right one, practice? Uh-huh, very much, yeah. Because if the Dharma is the right one, 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 if the Mm. 
That's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very much so we find that all through the suttas. I mean, to be fair, I think that there's a, a strong uh, emphasis in many aspects of Mahayana. There's also a strong emphasis on a gradual training, but maybe that also gets lost. Like if you look, say, for example, at um, a Sangha and the Yogacara Bhumi Shastra, then he has a very strong emphasis on, on gradual training there. And and isn't that exactly? <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what the thousand years of Chinese Chan tradition has argued about uh, the sudden verses and like. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Ah. All right. I think what they well, is it worth just <laughs> I think what they try to do is deify the teacher mm. so that the teacher is perfect from the very beginning. Mm. Just to increase their faith. Mm. But when they teach the normal student they try to say, Well you're not like that, so you mm. need to practice the gradual path. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what they do. Okay, so any more questions on the Pindabhata Parisuddhi Sutta? So quite a straightforward sutta. Okay, so we'll finish that.